Welcome back to the Name Redacted Podcast, America's most beloved podcast, the most downloaded Red Sox podcast in the world. Uh, special guest Pete fucking B Woo! in the house tonight. The fucking NHL playoffs are still going, but we got motherfucking Pete B special occasion Red Sox drizzle and ketchup on this episode. And Pete was like, I got to I got to get me some of that ketchup as long as it's not the Fenway Park ketchup, as long as it's Clark's ketchup. That's where I'm going to be. And and here he is, Pete. Uh, how are hey. you? I miss you guys. Yeah, we miss you, too. Um, you got a tattoo? I did. Yeah. Mm hmm. Is it done? Uh, it's not done. It's, did you cry? Did you cry? I didn't cry. No. Okay. It's not my first. It's not my first rodeo. It's not yeah, even the worst a, tattoo a, I've gotten. It's, it's your biggest. It was the biggest for sure. Yeah. And so you get, uh, I'm excited about it. You get I'm excited to finish it. Yeah. I mean, the Red Sox are excited to finish it, um, but they didn't in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on with the Red Sox? Because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I haven't been doing. Watching baseball. <laughs> <laughs> haven't been watching a shred of baseball. Nothing. Recently. <laughs> Nothing. Not even Not like a, on highlights. I don't Twitter. even know who's on the team anymore. They're in first place. Yeah, they're in Keep first going, place. Rymel Tapia. Oh, are they really? Convert, yeah. Uh, Rymel Tapia is um, he's leading the league in home runs right now out of nowhere. It's not going to last. <laughs> yeah, now you fuckers are definitely. <laughs> it's not going to last, but like he's he has 23 home runs right now. That's pretty good. It's him and Pete Alonzo. Um, obviously, like I said, I don't think he's going to be able to go wire to wire with it, but pretty impressive that we're almost in June and fucking Rymel Tapia of all people in the league and homers. Guy weighs like 40 pounds. Yeah, but he can swing it clearly. So um, that's pretty much it. the first place Boston Red Sox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Uh, Dever is actually they're talking about right now. Uh, compare the comparisons to Ricky Henderson. He has 33 stolen bases. I feel like I shouldn't be here. I feel like I'm, I'm messing up the mojo. This team is fucking buzzing. Apparently, yeah. mm -hmm. don't sorry, fuck up, Pete. Yeah, my bad. Yep. Uh, again, another thing that's probably not going to last. Nick Pavetta on pace for 314 strikeouts, which would surpass Pedro Martinez in 1999 when he had the triple crown by one strikeout. That's out of the bullpen too. Damn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget the hitting as well. He's actually converted. He's kind of playing a Shohei Otani like role right. in this team right now. Damn. Yeah. yeah. They need him at first base because uh, Tristan Casas decided to become an astronaut. <laughs> so he retired from baseball. That actually like that one. I do believe. <laughs> yeah. If there was anything that I believed out of what was just said, it was that Casas retired to become an astronaut. Yeah. Lance Bass recruited him. He was like, listen, we need you. We need you in space. Begged him and, for days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and he said, I'll be there. He's so, now a space cowboy. Yeah. Tristan Casas is uh, now a spaceman. And uh, our first baseman is Nick Pavetta, who, I mean, he doesn't have a ton of pop, but he can hit for average. And again, the strikeouts are, they're off the, they're off the charts right now. Um, Rafael Devers, 33 stolen bases. Um, and Ramel Tapia. Um, is leading the league in homers. 23. 23 home runs. I think Pete Alonso has 20. Tapia 23 right now. Just missed 24 today, unfortunately. Yeah, he almost fucking hit his 24th today. Almost went oppo. That would have been nice. Would have really played a, a, a big difference maker in this series. Red Sox would have swept. First place Red Sox would have swept that, ser uh, that series. Um, they are playing the Arizona Dimebacks. That's the team that they just almost swept. So, but... You know, it's not it's not 2018. I mean, they're on, they're on pace for 103 wins, but it's <clears throat> obviously we weren't expecting a 100 win season period. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna break out the record books and be like, oh, where does this team rank in Red Sox history right now? But pretty damn good. I mean, famously as a Bruins fan, you you don't want your team to break regular season records. Only goes yeah. downhill from there. Well. I mean, that sounds like a Bruins thing. The Red, when the Red Sox break team records, they still go on to win the championship. Ooh. But I'm just saying, is, is that fair or unfair? Is that fair or unfair? Yeah, I had 
think it's fair. I think it's pretty fair to say that the 2018 Red Sox went on to win the goddamn World Series when they were the winningest team in Red Sox franchise history during the regular season. That's not a shot at the Bruins. That's not a shot at the Bruins. That is just acknowledging that the 2018 Facts. Red Sox got the job done. Wow. What a year. What a year that was. What a year that was. I, uh, I have very fond memories of the 2018 Boston Red Sox. Um, and I've got fond memories of the 2023 Boston Red Sox now. So, Whose dog is that? I believe. Did I freeze again? Dude, your Jared. internet is the worst. <laughs> You've got to have an intervention. I've, I've not internet. seen Milliken have this many technical issues to start a show. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've cleaned it up lately. It was funny, though, like you cut out. And then when you came back, it was like in the middle of the positivity horn. <laughs> it was just very jarring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're going to get. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's it's uh, the, the guy I told you, the guy that's doing all the work on my house fucked me over. Um, can't get into a ton of details, but uh, Fuck yeah, yeah, the guy that was doing all the work in my house just fucked me over. So I'm going to have to get someone else to come help me out with this studio because he just dipped in the middle of the project. You've seen my studio, Jared, and what I've been able to, you know, kind of build and come back from in the mm-hmm. last couple months. From yeah. At one time, it was, it, was a, it was a rough scene. Pete, you remember. I mean, now, I can't help but notice, though, that you still have the, the microphone stand that is just directly right in okay. front of your face. <laughs> you want to hear I something funny? I did send you the link to the low profile microphone. Pete, Pete shut right. the fuck up. You want to know why? What do you think this is? That's that's it. I built it today. I put it together. You built it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> you're giving yourself a lot of credit there, pal. All right. It's, People you who basically don't know. snap two things into place. And <laughs> this I said took you, me two hours to figure out today. Two hours. You know, Jesus how embarrassing Christ, that Milliken. Is? OK, I can explain, though. So I guess whatever the you have to, like, twist something with the uh, what do you call this? The, the left wrench. wrench. The left wrench. Yeah, it's called an Allen wrench. It looks like an L. So I call it a left wrench. And I kept like tr- issue, Jared. Get internet that works, buddy. You're okay? just making oh. up. You're just making up wrenches. It looks like an L, so I called it a left wrench. Oh. Um, God, that's just not how that works, anyways. <laughs> so I I tried to screw it in, and then this weird little screw thing fell out, and then none of it fit together. Eventually, I got the screw thing back in with the uh, what'd you call this, Allen? It's an Allen wrench. An yeah. Allen yeah. wrench yeah, yeah. Allen Craig wrench. Yeah. Allen Craig, I like that. That's how I remember it, and I, I got it to fit back in. I just gotta actually set it up now. All right. Well, I will just point out that I sent you that link like two and a half months ago when I was actually on the show. Life isn't a race. It's a marathon. (laughs) Okay, Pete. All right. All right. We're we're trying to make strides here. But at least you got Internet. It's fine. Exactly. I can actually, you know, record without any issues here. Sorry, Jared. Not my fault. Like, I'll be honest, Jared, like the between like the black, the very dark, like black background, which does look nice. But like, it also kind of looks like you're in a cave a little bit. Mm hmm. Like it looks like you're in like a, like a, the the depths of a cave, and your internet is matching that that aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. The guy that bailed on me was supposed to get help get the graphics on the wall too. So that <laughs> that's something that uh, I'm gonna have to now pursue on my own. So well, lots of L's for you lately. Yeah, I've had a real tough time the last couple. Uh, I would say about for about a week now. I've been. I've been having a tough time. Anyways, hit out of the park this baseball season with DraftKings Sportsbook. Bet on your favorite teams, players, and rivalries all season long. This week, new customers can place a $5 bet, get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can take a shot at a bigger payout with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Open the DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt-in, and place your stepped-up same-game parlay by combining three or more bets from any big league game. Boost your uh, baseball winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. All you got to do is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Sign up with the promo code Jared, J-A-R-E-D. New customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the promo code Jared. Um, Okay. Uh, I was very bored by this series. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, obviously, I've had like a really rough week and I've been in a horrible mood because of it. It feels like a lot of bad things have been happening to me. And... I don't deserve any of it, and I didn't bring any of it on myself. But maybe that's factoring in. Did any of you get the same vibe that that series was just boring as fuck? 
Um, I thought the first game was just like refreshing because it had been such ugly baseball in L.A. You just right. wanted the team to actually score some runs and show some life on offense. And they did. But yeah, the first one was convincing. The second game, I sweat a little bit. It was nice to see Garrett Whitlock out there. What version? But, you know, you didn't have Devers the first two games. So he's not in the middle of the lineup. And we saw what he did in the third game. Not super exciting, but I think at the same time, two out of three against the team with the third best record in the NL. So it's a good weekend. Still lost the whole road trip, four and five, but it's a nice weekend. It didn't feel like it, though. It didn't feel like they, yeah, I don't know. I, well, you won two out of the series. That's the most shitty part about it all. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the reason why. I guess like Devers being out of the lineup, you just, anytime that you throw a lineup out there, out, out there and you see the lineup card, it's like, well, no Devers. Like, eh, yeah, that's not the best we got. 940 start on Friday doesn't help either. No. Whose dog is that? That's mine. <clears throat> hmm. R.I.P. Bullet. Yeah, Bullet's dead. It couldn't be Bullet. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> Pete, what do you know about Bullet? Uh, so, I, I mean, there's been a lot of jokes that, I, that have gone right over my head. But from what I've gathered from context clues, your dog died, but it doesn't seem like it's it seems like you maybe killed your dog. Whoa, but whoa, yes, whoa, yes, whoa, yes, no. but, yes, yes, no. yes, yes. But yes. It's, there's it's it's so lighthearted that it it's like has to be a fake dog. No, it's a no, real. No, dog. it's real. Your re- like your real dog died. Yes, two thousand three. How? Oh. How? Oh. Does his life statute, not matter to you? Statute of limitation. Like we can. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? statute of limitations. Yeah. Nobody cares about your dog. You people are the worst people I've ever met in my entire fucking life. Awful people. Um, That's like, no, I mean, you just told me you don't give a fuck. You're laughing, dancing hey, on my dead dog's not grave. Me, not me. Not you me. said he exploded, Jared. He did. That's how he went. But it's OK. We said we, we honor like, him. We honor him. He was like assaulted nine, by nine 11 jokes are funny now. And like that was only two years before your dog died. So it's I think we can make fun of your dog. I'm still not. I'm still not ready to go there. I think at the. Like the whispering in the ear meme, I can't touch that. <laughs> oh, you're you're not about that. <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like. Uh, so the uh, do you know what Founders Day is in Saugus? No, it's like I don't know. It's like the it's it's like Saugus does like this. It's basically Saugus Day um, in September, and there's been memes about. It. I've seen pictures of it, but like I've actually seen it in real life. They do a blow up slide but it's the titanic sinking oh my god it's the titanic sinking but it's a slide that you go down and it's like a blow up slide and like thousands of people died during that <laughs> like a hundred years from now are they gonna have like a twin it's towers be- slide like like that's the same thing like you can't do that that's it's gonna be the six flags ride with the uh like the thing that just goes all the way up and then oh drops oh my god yeah, you can't do that. I, I, it at the time, I mean, this was probably, I was probably in high school, maybe before that. And I was just like, yeah, you know, like I love the Titanic. Like, that's cool. I love, I, I mean, I grew up loving the Titanic. But then you think about it and you're like, wait a second. With historical perspective, like that would be like the same as making a 9 11 themed fun ride. Like, you can't do that. Like, thousands of people died. Seems like it's in poor taste when it's like, for fun, for like fun, yeah, yeah, you can't. What, do, what does can't. the Titanic have to do with Saugus? That's, a good that's question where I saw too. that's where I saw the slide in real life. Like, I've seen it like now, like recently, but, in the last, why? But yeah, but but I'm saying, like, yeah, his question is like, like what is why is what that inspires a day? That? It's it's kind of just like a town carnival day, yeah, but why is there a <laughs> Titanic themed uh, thing at your town carnival? I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming it's at a bunch of carnivals. It seems like Titanic had like a real prominent role uh, uh, growing up in Saugus somehow. Yeah. Does it say Titanic? It's the fu- what other fucking ship could you slide down? Tyler. There's a lot of ships. There's a lot crash. of ships. Yeah. No, 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 no. Look it up. Wait, you, uh, this is a good question from Tyler. Like, no, it's is not. It, the Titanic is, it... is very distinguishable. Plenty of sure. ships have sank in time. I bet one has yeah, sank yeah. this yeah. year. Okay, did they all look like the Titanic? No. They're all different ships. A cruise ship looks like the Titanic. It literally was the Titanic. I, I mean, just uh, looked up ship sinking. Five sinking ships caught on camera this year. <laughs> this year, Jerry. All right, well, then why don't, you, why don't you fucking Google ship sinking blow up ride and then be like, oh, yeah, that's definitely the Titanic. 
Well, obviously, you've never used fucking Google before. <laughs> unless oh, unless the show. words are on the side of the boat. Oh, this is a store brand ship. I guarantee you the down. words are on the side of the boat. Look it up, Tyler. <laughs> I'm looking at... Oh, my God. No, <laughs> this <laughs> isn't the Titanic. <laughs> yeah. This is a $10,000 floaty. Giant inflatable sinking ship slide. Is this what you're talking about? I can't see what you're looking at, but it's is it a slide or a ride? It's a slide. All right. Well, there's potentially this could be it. It's about ten grand. Is it? Is it Titanic labeled? Um, it it looks kind. Wait, let me. No, it just says giant inflatable sinking ship slide. Now this might be a yeah, because the fucking a uh, likeness uh, thing. Captain Smith will sue their ass. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the. Let me look up the Titanic. The White Star Line will come for you. Does it have orange poles on it? Poles? Oh yeah, that 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 does look very Titanic-y. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, fair. Doesn't yeah. make it okay, Jared. Uh, Sickens me that you support well, this he's cause. Saying that, I don't he's saying support that he, it. He, no, that's what his original point was saying that he doesn't. That oh. it's, like, it feels wrong to him. And this is yeah. coming from the world's number one Titanic enthusiast. Yeah, like it just feels like a weird thing to. Like, so I've been to like Titanic museums where you walk down the hallways. It's respectful. Yeah. It's like they recreate the inside of the ship. Like, that's cool. But to have little kids slide down the sinking ship being like, wee, like, yeah, thousands of people died. Thousands of people died, Tyler. R.I.P. Bullet and then them. Bullet definitely wouldn't have made it on the Titanic. <laughs> Bullet would have swam his ass off. No. No. Gets Bullet hit by probably... another boat in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. That's fucked up, Tyler! <laughs> Bullet exploded! Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do No, no, stop. <laughs> Bullet exploded. Yeah, stop that. You can't do that. All right, well, that'll do it for me on this week's podcast. You leaving? <laughs> I gotta run, fellas, yeah. Uh, Thank you, who Pete. are you voting for? Oh. Who are you voting um, for, for the Fox Ketchup Series MVP? Um... Uh, let's say let's say Casas. I just I hope he's having fun in space. <laughs> All right. I think he's he's doing uh he's doing very important things for the future of this uh this galaxy that we live in. So he's my vote. Okay. All right. Got a very interesting vote just now. <clears throat> AC. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give it away. I'm not going to give it away, but I just got a very interesting vote. All right. I'll catch it at the end of the episode. All right. Bye, Pete. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for coming. All All right. Go Sox. All right. Hell yeah, bro. All right, dude. Sounds good. And that was talking. That was talking tragedies of Pete Blackburn. We did about two minutes of Red Sox, but we updated him on Bullet. And that's important. Mm -hmm. Now he knows about Bullet. Now he knows about the, the Titanic ride. By the way, I did not participate. I, I've seen it with my own eyes. Did not participate. You didn't go down it? Mm-mm. Can't speak on it then. Mm-mm. Might be a great ride to actually go on. I'm sure it was, it's exhilarating. But <laughs> Jake, would you go on that ride? It seems like it's in poor taste. <laughs> it's definitely. And, and to, to add to this, to add to this, when I was a kid, uh, Something again that just didn't register in my brain. I did not realize. I might actually still have it. I bet you it's still under my childhood bed. I had a titanic piggy bank. And it was the ship sinking into the water. And you put the coins in the top of the titanic. Imagine your dead like uncle. You're like he died on the Titanic, and then it's, this little fuck here is putting the coins same into that thing. As like if you had a piggy bank of the World Trade Center on fire, same thing. Like one was intentional, one was an accident, but still thousands of people died. Why is that a piggy bank? Why do I have it? You still have it? I just said I bet I guarantee you. Well, I don't guarantee you. There's probably a seventy percent chance that piggy bank is still under. My childhood bed. Something about Saugus. There's a lot of weird things going on in Saugus right now. No, 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 no. I was just a very, I'm a Titanic enthusiast. But that. Were you living in Saugus, Jared? Yeah. Uh, So there. And then we have this weird slide thing. You got a third Titanic thing? The slide thing is not. 
that's not it feels similar. That's not exclusive to Saugus, and neither is this piggy bank. I just happen to have it. Feels weird. You feel weird. Bad look for Saugus. Bad look for fucking Brockton. Shut don't don't even oh, yeah. speak yeah, on yeah. this city. Don't yeah, yeah. don't speak yep. on my city, mm-hmm. the 508 like that. The 508. The, the city of champions. That is don't not, speak on us like that. You don't have your own area code. Yeah. You don't. No, <laughs> There's you don't. not a 508 number outside of Brock that I promise you that. You're an idiot, dude. Worcester doesn't count. <laughs> okay. Whatever, dude. All right. We got to take a break and talk about Zin nicotine pouches. We're always talking about what a team needs to get to number one, but Zin nicotine pouches are already there. Zinn has helped millions of people achieve a lasting change, earning the title of America's number one nicotine pouch. If you're a smoker or you're a dipper looking to make a change, look no further than Zinn. Zinn is made with six simple ingredients and is available in a wide range of varieties, including spearmint, citrus, and even coffee. And it's available in two strengths so you can control your nicotine satisfaction. Because it's discreet, you can enjoy it anywhere anytime so you never have to miss a moment of the game plus every can of zin earns you points towards premium items like tailgating gear top of the line tech zin swag even gift cards find your zin at your local convenience store or online at zin.com that's zin z-y-n.com warning this product contains nicotine nicotine is an addictive chemical i'm excited I think you have powers what about what happened in the first game of the series the Red Sox won this baseball game seven to two. Who'd they face? <laughs> Do it. Please. Please. Oh uh, no. You have it. It was a it was a tough night. <laughs> it was a tough night. Four. Brandon <laughs> Yeah, you got a shit kicked in. Promptly demoted. Right after. Promptly. I saw a lot of people crapping on me for saying he's a good pitcher. Well, he's a you're, young, you're good a pitcher. You're fucking idiot for saying that. Uh, he's a, he was a top 30 prospect entering the year. He Jake, has a very high Jake, potential. Jake, Jake, is Brandon Fott good? <laughs> From what I've seen, he's pretty bad. <laughs> he's pretty bad. Listen, not everyone comes no, up no, and dominates. No. You it listen. takes time. You listen, Tyler. Three and two thirds, eight hits, Five earned runs, gave up a bomb. His ERA is 837. <laughs> it's a hard time right now that, for him. Y- fucking, we got Tyler on the last episode being like, yeah, Brandon Fott, he's a very good pitcher. You guys should be very scared. I, all very right, scared let's reel Brandon it in. Fott. Brandon Fott is going to come in and then pitch so well against the I race. sound like that. That's what you sound like. And no, you I don't. Thing. Yes, you did. You said I said things. You you made it seem like this dude was going to throw a perfect game with 28 strikeouts. Shut the against fuck the up. You did. I never said that. I did you not say he that. was going to go nine innings with 27 strikeouts. You I did not say that. You basically said that. You did. Jake. Jake, did I say that? Pretty much said it. You fuck you, Jake. Said that. You did. You wanted to strike fear into the hearts of our listeners who were tuning into the baseball game on Friday night. And they're like, well, I'm, hey, hey, babe, you want to go on a date Friday night? Because I, Tyler said there's no point in even watching those socks. <laughs> Tyler said, shut it down. Try again on Saturday because fucking the fart box is coming to town <laughs> and he's, he's going to shut down the socks. Why even bother putting myself through that? That's what you did. Listen, all I can say is I'm a noble man and I can acknowledge when someone is a top pitching prospect in the game. Oh my and, God. you know, as I look at someone like Tristan Casas, who's scuffled, he's had his fair share of scuffles. We know how special he is, but, you know, he hasn't matched his prospect ranking in terms of production yet. Had a good series, but. I can acknowledge stuff like that. Sorry. Sorry, I'm too mature. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You didn't listen to a word I said there. Uh, something about being mature. You know who was real mature? <clears throat> uh, Garrett Whitlock. Chris Sale. Chris Sale, yeah. Stomach bug. Pitching through it again. Yeah. Five I, innings? I didn't, I didn't appreciate people talking about his velocity. I didn't appreciate that. Yeah, he clearly wasn't fully himself. They, and, you know, he's worked deep his last couple starts, but he didn't. He was he had 96, 97 when he needed it. Yeah. But once again, 290 ERA, 291 FIP in his last seven starts now. Also, 
I don't know if you've noticed this. He's basically abandoned the changeup. He hasn't needed it recently because he has his command again. Mm. That, that's the biggest thing for him. He may not have the 97, 98 some nights, but as long as he can dot it where he needs to go, he's going to be fine. And if he needs to change up, he pulls it out. He did a couple times against Arizona, but as long as he can dot that fastball, can, you know, up in the zone where it's not getting smacked, he can kind of get it out of the zone a little bit. That's the biggest thing for him. Dot the slider. It's not constantly kind of laying in the middle of the plate. Chris Hill's back. The baseball savant page looks friggin' sexy. It's getting redder with every single start. Mm. Nice to give him a little breather. Josh Winkowski followed up with three. A little mm. bad Babbitt block in the eighth, but continues to be really good out of the bullpen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. He's great. Kike? Kike! <laughs> hey! Finally went Kike. deep. Yeah, Kike, uh, he needed a, a game like that. I uh, almost went into shock seeing him hit a homer again. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, where is it here? Kike. Oh, yeah. That, he just had that one. He hit the homer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Casas Last one was three hits on Friday. Needed that. Casas with the three hits. Doogie with the three hits. Toppy a couple knocks out of the leadoff spot. You don't have uh, you don't have Devers, so it completely changes the dynamic of the lineup. Um, no Duran in that first game either. Right. Yeah, I think Cora got asked about Duran after the game today. <clears throat> I honestly, and I, I thought Cora, you know, he said he basically said him and Devers like you get back to Fenway. You hope he starts using the monster, but that's the big thing. Duran, he's swinging through everything. We're not seeing that kind of opposite field approach where he was able to drive some of those fastballs that were getting by him. But I think we're hitting a similar crossroad to where we were with Jaron Duran a year ago, where in 2021, he came up and he just struggled. He really never got it going. 2022, he came up and dominated for a month and then couldn't make the adjustment once the league adjusted to him. He made the adjustment after 21. This year, he made the adjustment. We saw him do it again for over a month. And here we are again. The league is readjusted. Can you figure it out? Mm hmm. Do you have the baseball IQ to do it in season? It's great that you could do it over the off season and kind of get back on track. But in season, when you're kind of going through this stretch and you know he's getting destroyed right now, it was a really bad road trip for him. Can you kind of piece it back together and at least be solid? Like his numbers were so good that the overall year line looks strong, but it's been a couple of weeks now that he really hasn't had it going. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. I, I think Cora basically said, Get this guy back to Fenway. He's got the swing to just poke doubles off the monster and, and he'll figure it out during the homestand. I hope that that's what happens. Um, yeah. Last 26 at bats for Jaron Duran. He's hitting 77, 77, 77 for a 154 OPS, zero walks, 13 Ks. Yeah. So very interesting. But Adam Duvall is when? June 9th? Yep, he begins his rehab assignment on Tuesday. <clears throat> I would love to. Uh, I, I I doubt that they would answer the question. I doubt that Alex Cora, like if you were to ask him right now in a media scrum, hey, what's the plan when Adam Duvall comes back? He's just going to say, we'll figure it out. You know, like we'll figure it out once we get there. There's no way to know right now, which is the truth. Like that is the truth. I'm sure that they have plan A, plan B, plan C, but you oftentimes have your shit figured out for you. Um. So, I think that's why right now, if I'm Jaron Duran, right this next two week span is so big. It is major for him because if he bounces back and he gets hot for another week, amazing. They're, like he's going to hold that center field job. He's not going to lose much playing time, if any at all. If he has another week and a half or two weeks of this, then the Red Sox got to sit there and say, all right, well, look at how much playing time he's going to probably get. Do they want to move off a of Tapia? who it seems like core really likes using off the bench. And you could say, well, let's go Duvall for a bit. We'll send Duran down to get those everyday at bats and kind of get back on track. But then it feels like you're losing all the momentum you've built here with him yeah. and kind of reestablishing himself. And the biggest difference, he's playing great defense in center field. He wasn't yeah. doing that a year ago. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to annoy the listeners right now. Why? Because I'm going to tell you guys something, but... I can't say it on the podcast. You're going to bleep this out? 
Jake has to bleep it, yeah. <laughs> I I just confirmed. No way. Yeah. Confirmed. <laughs> Via. Via. Wow. So we'll see how Tuesday goes. Anyways. Uh, Jerry Kravis nails it again. Yeah. I mean, I just, I got feel. I got feel. That's all. <clears throat> um, Jake, what was your biggest takeaway from this series against the D-back? Um, I do agree with you. It was kind of a boring series, but overall, it's just good to see them fight back. Like I think Alex Spear said it in the booth today. It doesn't seem like a team where when they get in a slump, they're going to go on slumps for like a really long period of time. Like to see them get swept by the Angels and then take two out of three from a pretty good team is encouraging. Mm. Mm. I, I think that's just what people need to learn to accept with this team. We're going to have weeks where we feel confident, great, and then you're going to have weeks where you're down and you're like, fuck. Like this team is feels like they're not as good as their record is, and there's going to be weeks where they feel better than what their record is. That, that's what being in this space of 81 to 85 wins is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they are who they are. <clears throat> I feel like I kind of said this. Uh, I did the baseball hour with uh, <clears throat> Matt McCarthy on Thursday. And uh, I was like, yeah, I have this analogy that I kind of I, I came up with on the ride over there on Thursday. and. I said it's almost similar to this is this it's like a horror movie where you figure out who the killer is like 30 minutes in. We kind of know who the Red Sox are, right? Like I feel like we know who they are and who they're going to be. At least I hope so because we're what like what we think they are is kind of what we were hoping for, like in that range of 82 to 86 wins. Like at this point, we know they're not going to be a dumpster fire. Or at least you hope it doesn't trend that way in the second half. Like things can, things can change over the course of a season, um, but they're not going to be some surprise like ninety five win team either. Like in twenty thirteen, like we 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 kept hearing the comparisons to twenty thirteen. Um, so yeah, I, I think they are they kind of they are who we thought they were, but that still doesn't take away the surprise element of what is that at the end of the year? What does that look like at the end of the year? Is that eighty two wins and you miss the playoffs, or is that eighty six wins and you happen to get in somehow? We still it's don't all know about, the answer to that. Yeah, it's all about that last week or two. Like, then I think that's been the major point. We're going to get to a week left in the season and say, all right, if things break the right way here, they're going to make it in. They'll maybe have a shot or they'll be in the conversation. If they go cold at the wrong time, then no, it, it's going to look more probably like 82 wins. But the reality is they could win 85 and 86 and still not make it in. But, mm -hmm. And that's it's extremely frustrating. It's, I understand that. You know, you can talk about the AL Central or the NL Central. They'd be in first place, third place in any other division. Yep, 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 yep. But that that it's nice to say that when it comes to the playoff standings, it's not going to change much. And you could sit here like us and say, yeah, they're a good baseball team. But, you know, do you picture them finishing ahead of the Yankees? Probably not. You know, the Blue Jays are behind them right now. I think most of us believe they're going to figure it out and they'll get back to being, you know, the Blue Jays. The Orioles have the third best record in baseball right now. Uh, you know, the Rangers pass them for a bit. But, you know, they're right there as well. They're going to get John Means back later in the year. I know he had a recent kind of injury situation setback pop up. But, yeah, like it, it's just you to be a good team right now is not a fun time in the AL East or the American League where there's a lot of very good teams out there. Yeah. The Rangers aren't going anywhere. I know a lot of people were hoping they would. So that puts a whole nother situation with the wild card, whether it's them or the Astros. I don't know that I was hoping that they wouldn't be legit, but I think some question whether or not, but you look at that run differential and it's no joke. No, I think it's Red Sox fans. You were like, all right, well, it looks like Seattle kind of isn't, you know, taking the step many thought they were going to take and they've had injuries as well. But, yeah. you know, the Rangers have gone and shown you, yeah, we're going to be a playoff team one way or the other here. Mm -hmm. Most like good chance to win the ALS, if anything. Yeah. Which is insane. I'm just I'm doing my best to not look at the playoff picture. You shouldn't because that's not what this year is about. And that's where the context and the narrative falls apart for people where they're like, you know, Felger calling me out, sobbing, sobbing on Felger and Maz for an hour last week. Tyler Milliken said the Red Sox are a good team. Oh, the standards in Boston are so fucking low these days, dude. Like, just look at the context of the picture we're talking about here. When they decide to stay under the luxury tax this year, pull that offer from Nate Evaldi off the table, 
Like that's what they told you. This year's about development. It's about taking a step forward as an organization. You have that problem. Don't look at Heim Bloom. Go cry to John Henry or whatever it may be. But that's the outlook they created for this team. That's the ceiling they put on this team. They said, hey, you know, things break, break right like 2021. You get in the playoffs. Anything can happen. Most likely, you're going to be an above average team. You hope a lot of young guys take a step forward. We hit this offseason. Guys in the system take a step forward. And you kind of see a lot clearer picture of what Heim Bloom's trying to do. You hope you look like, you know, a team that's going to be like the Braves or the Astros in the coming years where you have the depth, you got some money to throw around, and you got a lot of young players on the roster that are foundational pieces. Hmm. I'm still getting submissions for Clark's catch up. <clears throat> a lot of conflicted reports. Um, we don't have it's not going to be unanimous. I will say that it's not going to be unanimous. So we shall see. I mean, because it's like it's one of those series where. Like, it almost feels <laughs> like it almost feels like the Red Sox didn't even win this series because you didn't have Rafi for the first two, which like you won. Like Chris Sale was good, but he wasn't at his best. Like, what do you have? Three strikeouts? Three strikeouts? Yeah. Three Ks. I think we're spoiled. We're spoiled. Like, we're, we're already used to Chris Sale. Like, I, instead of just enjoying the Chris Sales out there and healthy, it's like, well, he only struck out three batters. Yeah, he went five innings. Fucking dominated. Shot. And only 73 pitches. Like, they, they pulled the court on him early. Yeah. So, I think that's worth talking about, right? People are like, why, why did they take him out at 73 pitches? Dude was battling the flu, A. Uh, and then you had the 110 and then 111 pitches. Plus, it was the first time that he wasn't on, what, six days rest? Yeah, he was on regular rest for the first time in like a month. All season? Yeah, like in the regular five-day set. Yes. So, so like, you try to preserve no him. issue with it. I when people are like, oh my God, now you're asking like the bullpen to do way more. Fucking cares. Like you had, you just had the off day. You're going to have another off day. Like Monday's an off day. Thursday was an off day. I had, I had no issue with Chris Sale being taken out at 73 pitches. And, and the, the thing about the dynamic between Chris Sale and being out there for X amount of pitches, whether it's too high or too low, he's going to tell Alex. Like if Chris Sale had an issue, with being taken out at 73 pitches, you'd probably have come out for the sixth inning. Like that conversation, like that, first of all, that conversation took place before the game. Like, hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to do some, some uh, workload management tonight. Okay. If you're feeling it in the, and in, in, in not only like you're taking into account two different factors, it's the 221 pitches over his last two starts. And it's the fact that the dude was sick leading up to it. Fine. Take what you can get. And I'm, I was more than happy with it. You got to pick your spots and sell. Like you said, the minute he got in the dugout straight to Cora hug. We knew this is what we needed out of you today. Chris sale. Can you give us just what we need to get through with the fully rested bullpen sale? Did it. That's what aces do. And then that's why you have Josh Winkowski. And, you know, you had a nice lead as well. It wasn't like the game was super close at that point. The offense showed up and did its job. Something that they haven't been doing. You were up, what, four runs when he came out of the game. Be one thing if maybe you were holding tight or whatever, you were worried, guys were tired. Everything played into the factor of, yeah, this is a good chance to give him a little bit of a breather. Yeah. <sighs> um, <clears throat> any Witty. thoughts from today? Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, Garrett Whitlock, first Please. start back. Uh, do you have any uh, numbers for the changeup? Yes, I do. What do you uh, got? So, we've kind of talked about going back to the Angel start. He had made three before he went down with this injury. That start against the Angels where he dominated, it was the slider that was really working for him. It wasn't the changeup. And I think really since about the time he started starting last year and he was dealing with the velocity, the changeup hasn't looked the same. Uh, not the changeup that Matt Andrees in 2021 kind of got him to throw and changed everything for him. That was the pitch that made him such a dominant reliever in 2021 and you know throughout most of 2022. But you look at the kind of vertical drop of the changeup, that's the big thing they were working on. He went from averaging 30 inches of vertical drop in those first three starts. He averaged 39 last night, max out at 43. And he's throwing the changeup slower. It's down 1.7 miles per hour, which that was on purpose. There had been some reports they changed the grip on the changeup. Apparently, those are wrong. He, he denied that during the game. He's just throwing it slower, kind of tunneling it a little bit differently. Uh, or I, I think he referred to it as pitching lanes. Mm -hmm. But that's the big thing for him. It looks like they figured out how to get his changeup working again. And then all of a sudden we see a guy in Garrett Whitlock while the velocity 
it is what it is. It, it's 92, 94. He can get up to 95, 96 in certain spots. But it looks like they found a way for the changeup to finally play with that fi- fastball a bit. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, <clears throat> it was kind of like um, left to right movement with drop. So it it was it was very impressive. I was very happy with it. Um, five innings, three hits, one earned run. Did not walk a guy. He had and and I I I tweeted about what I wanted to tweet about when he <laughs> looked very shaky in the first inning, and I wanted to say this kind of feels like the back to the rotation jitters. Like, I feel like th- this is a situation where he's like, I, I, you know, it's been a while. Like this is, it feels more comfy and less competitive. Is that fair to say? Like now that you've got Kluber in the bullpen, you've got uh Pavetta in the bullpen. It feels like certain guys are now taking their spots. And it's like, you know, there's no more competition. It's like Chris sale. This is your spot. Garrett Whitlock. This is your spot. Tanner Howe, congratulations. You've earned this spot. Like it, that's what it feels like. So I, it felt to me in that first inning, like Whitlock might have been a little uncomfortable, but he settled in very nicely and ended up uh, with a nice with a nice line at the end of the night. Yeah. And I think even the Kittel Marte homer, like it, it was that was a weird ass homer, like sl- like breaking ball in on the line. hands. He somehow yeah. kind of pulls it out. But that's the Garrett Whitlock you dream on. The guy who has those three pitches again. He, and he leaned on that changeup. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, he has feel and he's using it in certain spots. No, that was his second pitch in this game. And it continued to play all the way throughout. So I think you look at it here. Hopefully it keeps getting better. Like he continues to keep getting that feel. But what more could you really ask from him? And the changeup in terms of like uh, that vertical drop, it played with what he was doing in those AAA starts. I think it had 38 and 36 down there. So last night it had even a little bit more drop than he flashed during those rehab starts. Mm-hmm. Props to Dave Bush and the pitching coaches for getting him back there because we've given them crap for other stuff at times this year. If they made this, if they make this click and they get Garrett Whitlock to be a starting pitcher for this year, that's a big deal moving forward. This 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 catch up is is widely distributed. I, I really don't have a name in my head either that I'm super firm on at the moment. Me neither. Like I'm not, I'm not hard on anyone, and we'll get there when we get there. It, it, we can get there relatively quickly because I, I only had a couple thoughts about the loss. Um, <clears throat> Tanner Houck, this is his first start since uh, essentially being told you're the guy over Kluber. Four innings, six hits, uh, four earned runs, did not walk a batter, four strikeouts, gave up two homers. Uh, he, I know that that with Tanner. The narrative is usually can't see the lineup for a third time, or it's this is the ERA in the first three innings, the next three innings. And I mean, he's never really pitched into the seventh, eighth, ninth. Um, but it's just the narrative has always been like the longer that he pitches, the worse the numbers get. Uh, to me, especially after today, it feels like he's got one bad inning syndrome because he gives up the three hits in the first inning or no, the three runs, excuse me, in the first inning. And they were teeing off. I believe he gave up four straight hits at one point, And it was all... They were eating that fastball. Solid, solid contact. Even the slider. Because he was... I think Middlebrooks made the point about having like an 0-1 count. And then he just threw a cookie in there when he didn't even have to throw a pitch for a strike. And these guys are just sitting on it. And they were hammering it. So uh, I, I think that that's all part of the learning process, right? Like this guy does not have a ton of big league experience and a big league rotation. I think he's going to continue to get better and learn from it. Uh, He talked about it after the game. I'm trying to think of like what stood out from his, his press conference after the game, but he, he kind of addressed the mistakes that he made and pitch decisions that he made. Um, So I, I don't think, I don't think like this, I'm not, trust me, I'm not concerned about Tanner Howe. Like, I, I think we keep referring to, oh, the ERA is high, but look at the FIP. Um, I, I have virtually no concern. And, the, and you got to tip your your cap to uh, a really good pitcher on the other side, because if the Red Sox go out there and score six, seven runs like we're used to, we're not talking about Tanner Houck giving up four runs. Like, you'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, Tanner Houck, like Red Sox, uh, Red Sox win seven to four. 
you know, a couple doubles from Masataki Yoshida, 7-4 victory, and Hauk was good. You know, four runs. We'll take that. But instead, they lose because they score two runs. Uh, you have that Devers at bat with the bases loaded against Chafin. Uh, fastball up. I mean, he that people have been saying, when are you going to stop letting Devers get away with it? When are you going to start talking about Devers and his struggles? Uh, I don't I don't know that I'm smashing any any five alarm fire type things with, when it comes to Devers and his struggles. But if you were to look at it right now, surprisingly, after an 0 for 5 tonight, uh, he's hitting 242 with a 783 OPS. So he's got to be get better. it going. That like there's a difference between, oh, man, I'm concerned about that. And he's got to get it going. And I think, you know, he, he hits the ball hard even when he makes outs. Like, he's, he's making loud outs. Uh, he'll be fine. I'm not, worried. I'm not worried about Rafael Devers. Like, this is, this is a proven commodity at the big league level. It's not something where you have to, you know, oh, is, is it going to pan out? Like, we got to workshop this? Like, no, I'm not worried about it. I, I agree with you. People were sitting there saying, oh, he got his money. Oh, look, he doesn't give a fuck. He's falling apart. No, it's not that. Also, he was injured the first two games of the series. That's something to keep in mind here. But for the month of May, it just isn't what it needs to be. He's been a below league average hitter going into today, this month. When Rafael Devers is kind of the heart of this whole team and this lineup and it's his team, yeah, got to do more. It's, he's still hitting 272. What is the weirdest part to me? His plate discipline is, it is rough this year. And he's never been, you know, Mr. Walk or anything like that. But it's a 2% walk rate so far this month. And you look at Rafael Devers just the last couple of seasons, right? So this year, it's at 4%. Last year, he was at 8%. In 2021, he was at 9%. So it feels like he's just pressing up there a lot. And I don't know if that's kind of the pressure of him trying to be the guy thinking like, hey, like every time I got to go up there, I got to hit a nuke. Because, you know, a lot of us talked and said, well, are the teams going to even pitch to Rafael Devers? Is everything just going to be out of the zone or whatever yeah. it's going to be? That was the entire he's spring chasing. training conversation. Right. Like it, unfortunately, right now, what he's doing is he just he's swinging at everything out there. It's not like he's just getting walked to death or anything like that. He's overly aggressive and that doesn't really fit the character of this team so far. So I don't know if that's, you know, Justin Turner can have an impact on him. I think it's just he hasn't been 100 percent right there. And you're hoping right when you look at Rafael Devers said he was going to carry this team at some point today felt like one of those moments where it's like, all right, you know, the offense offense isn't really going. You get him in that spot in the seventh inning, another chance in the ninth inning as well. Can we get that Raphael Devers moment? And I think it gets a little more frustrating when it's like, well, Jaron Duran's given you like you squeezed a lot out of Jaron Duran in a month and he stepped up. Yoshida put this team on his back for a period of time at, at one point this year uh, and really kind of gave them what they needed. Emmanuel Valdez starting to cool off has put this team on his back at certain points and kind of had a nice little hot streak here and there. When are we going to get the Devers? Verdugo was so unreal the first month and a half, you know, heated back up in front of his family this weekend. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for that Devers stretch and it will come. It's only a matter of time. And I think by the end of the year, we'll look back and be like, oh, good season for Rafael Devers. But he just needs to be better. That's what it is. Needs to tighten it up at the plate a little bit. I think yeah. he knows that. I think Alex Cora knows that. Yeah. But Devers, it's not a it's a not a question of if it's or, still May. It doesn't it's feel when. like it, it, but it's still May. I'm not. I, it's still may is a phrase that you can use for guys like Devers. Like you can't use it for teams like the A's. <laughs> like, no. You can't be like, it's still may. I mean, like there's still a chance. Like, you know what certain teams are like, who's going to be in it. Who's not going to be in it. Um, but you can stay. It's you can say it's still may about guys like Devers that are just proven big league commodities that uh, they're going to make their tweaks. Not to throw, not to like stir the pot a little bit here, Tyler, but uh-huh. Uh, I mean, there is someone that's kind of missing from the Devers equation that may have been helpful in the past. Welcome back. No, you What'd you say? That? No, I heard missing and then it cut out. Yeah, there, there's, there's maybe someone or something that was uh, missing from the equation. J.D. Martinez or Xander? <clears throat> I, think it would, I mean, it's a good point on Xander, but from a hitting perspective, it's JD. Yeah, the, that, that's where I thought you were going to go. I guess uh, I think Devers is too good of a hitter to fall into that. And I think there's other guys. I think Justin Turner's right there. And while he may not be the, 
you know, the ideally J.D. Martinez kind of hitting guru in that way. He's kind of a hitter guru, hitting guru in another way where it's yeah. a lot of patience and kind of going up there. I think Rafael Devers could take kind of something from Dr- Justin Turner's game right now and hopefully get that walk rate back up to where it was a year ago. It just feels like a guy who's constantly kind of doing, trying to do a little too much. He's pressing out there. Yeah. Um, and some people I know are saying, well, the BABIP, yeah, I, I do hear it. It's 252 this year. In May, it was 311. So he was very unlucky in April. I think those April numbers should have been even better than what they were. In May, he has not as been as, un- as unlucky as some people want to say he's been right now. Yeah. We'll see how it and pans out. He needs I, I do want to... Yeah, I do want to add one thing in on that Tanner Houck conversation. This is the second start in a row. He's kind of scuffled early. So for those people that are sitting there and I got a bunch of it. Oh, this guy isn't a starter. He's scuffling in the first couple innings. Like the reality of that is if he was in the bullpen, he'd be doing the same thing. So the fact that he's able to kind of lock in and figure it out as he works through these starts is a good sign to me. I think you could have got a fifth inning out of him. But I think Cora said, hey, the game's tight. Let's not take any chances here. We have the off day tomorrow. We'll bring in a Joely Rodriguez in the fifth inning because we can branch him to Pavetta. But I think you could have got five out of hell. It looked like he had really settled in. I think it was, what, nine in a row he retired when he came out. Mm. Um, big holiday weekend, Tyler. Memorial Day? Yeah, you're going to uh, enjoy some blue moons as you reflect uh, for Memorial Day? I've actually already had two this weekend. Oh, did you? I did. I, I've been enjoying myself a little bit. There you go. Been branching out. That's it. I love me. Nice, cold, blue moon. Mm. Feels that summery vibe right now, and I'll definitely yeah. be having more than two tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, we still got to talk about you branching out on courtside, because a lot of people are making some really good points. A lot of people are saying, oh, he has good time points. to go to the Celtics, but he doesn't have time to go to the Red Whoa. Sox. No, 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 we'll talk about it. No, 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 no. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it Spare because me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the chance to defend yourself. But first, Jake, please tell the, the folks at home about Blue Moon. Beer is a tried and true baseball tradition, but Blue Moon is the only beer brewed by baseball. Blue Moon was born in a ballpark, first brewed at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. Make it your one of a kind baseball tradition, whether you're at the park or watching from home. Speaking of traditions, it's become a tradition of mine to crack open a blue moon while I sit down to get ready to do these ad reads. Right after the end of recording every episode, I go straight to the fridge, I grab a blue moon, I come back, sit down at my desk, and after I get that first taste of subtle sweetness and hints of coriander, I just think about all the stupid shit Tyler said over the last 24 hours that I can roast him for. Today, we're going to go with the Celtics game. And I'm not going to get on him for the tracksuit. I know a lot of people are doing that. I actually think it was a pretty good look for our boy. But the fact that this guy is showing up for Thursday night, midweek, 8.30 start Celtics games and can't accept an invite from Jared to go to the Red Sox, it's nuts. I mean, he doesn't even like the Celtics. And the craziest part is his entire world revolves around the Red Sox. Every second of the day Tyler's awake, he's thinking about the Red Sox. And here he is with an all-access pass to Fenway Park to do whatever he wants. And he hasn't used it once. Tyler, solid appearance at the Seas. You look good. You got the dub. But we're going to need to see you at some Sox games pretty soon. And I'll be more than happy to grab you a couple Blue Moons. With its refreshing flavor with Valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander, Blue Moon Belgian-style wheat ale is a -a one-of-a-kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full-flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. Blue Moon was brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia and get you excited for the new season. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something one of a kind? It's bold flavor, bright explosion of color, and iconic orange slice ritual guarantee a one of a kind beer experience perfect for spring weather. Best served with its signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful bright color, a beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon, but you can enjoy it all season long. Keep baseball traditions alive with Blue Moon Belgian style wheat ale. It's one of a kind every time. Check out shop.bluemoonbrewingcompany.com for beer and baseball merch and visit get.bluemoonbeer.com slash Jared to find Blue Moon delivery options. That's get.bluemoonbeer.com slash Jared. Blue Moon, made brighter. Celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado Ale. Thank you, Jake. Uh, so you've had some time to reflect. I mean, this is, this is not something that came from me. I'm just at the, the I, I felt it from you when I mentioned it last podcast. No, 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 no. No, no, I, I want I, I want Tyler Milliken to live his best life. I want you to always be happy. I want you to be doing things that bring you joy. Uh, I want Tyler Milliken to become the star that he is. I want your star to continue to rise. And how does that happen? You got to be sitting courtside. Celtics playoffs, right? <laughs> got to be doing True. it. 
but you also get to be sitting next to the Red Sox dugout with with me. And I agree. And I feel like you, for some reason, don't have time to do that. But you have time to sit courtside at the Celtics, Tyler? Welcome back. I, I'm, I'm just going to assume I knew what you said to finish up that line. Mm-hmm. But it was a situation that played out. And I, I did feel when I was there, I was like, you know, me and Jared, we have not gone to a game yet. So it feels weird. That was my first game. I've worked with those guys two years now. I've been at the Sports Hub almost three. It was the first time we've ever done anything like that. Um, but I think the big thing was it landed on a rare day where I didn't have anything going on. Like uh, my schedule week is usually very booked, as we've talked about on this podcast, uh-huh. especially those Saturdays. Got a lot of comments on the, about that on the picture I posted on Instagram yesterday. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but it kind of lucked out and I wasn't even supposed to go to the game originally. Oh, That's the other part of this. Yeah. So uh, Zoe was supposed to go. Zoe banged out. Mm-hmm. So they were like, Tyler, do you want to come? And I was like. Talking with you, and I feel like a lot of the advice I've been given, Jay Stu as well. Tyler needs to kind of grow up. Tyler needs to go out and be out there, network, make connections. You got to take that next step in life. Can't be always, you know, antisocial, yada, yada. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a change. This is the start of a change. I'm going to go out. I'm going to be a person. I'm going to shake some hands. I'm going to kiss some babies. I'm going to look fresh as fuck in the Nike tech on TV. Uh, and that's what I decided to do. I went out. I was like, this is going to be the start of something. So this is a new era of Tyler Milliken that started on Thursday night. And, and like me asking you to come to the game was not enough for you to have this life change. It was the Celtics. It's guilted me every day. I think about it every week. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm waiting. It's been a while since I've heard Jerry Kravis offer up tickets to a Red Sox game. I mean, how, I, many I think times, you. how many times are you going to get curved before you just try a different bar? You know, it, it's just hard. I, a day of is very hard for me. But yeah. I understand that's not me being picky. That's not me telling you, hey, like, no, you hey, said to go fuck let myself. Let me know. You did. I did not. Mm-hmm. Um, but fortunately, this was something where I knew a couple days in advance. So I could kind of work some days around. I, yeah. Thursdays are usually like one of my few open days during a week as well. Mm. But I want to go to a so game you, with so you. So you're busier than me. Hell no. Mm. No one works harder than Jared Carabas. Mm-hmm. But I think I'd like to say I'm also pretty busy. Yeah, you're, you're, you're very busy. You're very busy. But uh, I'm, I'm just saying, like, any time that I've been like, hey, Jake, do you want to go to the game? Jake's at the game every time. Never miss one. I respect Jake. Jake is always out there. Um, mm-hmm. Jake, where do you live, Jake? In Southie. That's a, that's a big difference. Mm-hmm. Tyler Milliken's in Brockton, the 508, the city of champs. You can move into my house if you want. Give me a room. We can be roommates. You got one. Thank you. Um, but I did feel like it was a nice little experience and it was cool to see everyone on social media. A lot of people were shocked, shocked by the fashion choice. I mean, did for, I a guy that, for a guy that's never seen the Sopranos, that was an interesting outfit choice. It the was. Nike Tech. Yeah, for sitting courtside for the Celtics playoffs to go full sweatsuit. <laughs> I mean, you look like you just went for a jog and sat down for a second. <laughs> All right. I the way I looked at it, I was like, first off, going through my wardrobe, I I do dress differently outside of work. Like I dress like a 25 year old would. I'd like to think I got a little swag. People people were surprised. Like, damn, Tyler's got a little drip. I I do have a little drip. I'm I'm drippy, as some would say. Um, There's no fucking way that you actually said that and meant it. There's no way. What drippy or drip? Both. Yeah, I'm drippy and dripping. Um, But. You know, I, I was like, I want to in his sweat by wearing a fucking sweatsuit at a All right. basketball game. Fuck you. I wasn't sweating. I saw those comments, too. Yeah, I was okay. sunburned as we saw. Go oh, look you're at the last sunburned. podcast. Sunburned. I was. OK. Do you remember the last episode, Jared? No. <laughs> uh, I was sunburned. Jake, you saw the sunburn. <laughs> yeah, you were pretty burnt. Thank you. Oh, uh, so I was a little cooked. If you saw, you had to post the bad picture too. Great friend here, Jared Carabas here. Post the That's bad the picture, picture, not I the good saw. one. Where is there the was good another one? one where whoever took the picture didn't have their friggin' brightness turned up, and my face actually looked the color it is. 
I did not look like oh, I had I'm ran sorry. a mile I'm before. I'm sorry. Then. I didn't realize that we were girls in a bathroom at the bar where you had to get all universal approval before we post the picture. Hey, Tyler, Listen, is I this one cute angles. enough? Tyler, is this one cute enough? Is this one cute? You I'm like a cute this kid one? and you took the cuteness away. Listen, I've never seen a good picture of you. So I just figured this one, this one's oh. going to do. Are you kidding me? <laughs> not one? No. What about the one I threw up on Instagram? Uh, I think you liked my, it. My my favorite picture. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that today? Uh, yesterday, yeah, or yeah, maybe yeah. today. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I like that picture. Um, my favorite picture of you <laughs> is at the watch party where it's you, Pat Light, Jake, <laughs> and some random person, and you're just throwing Corey. up the number one like you just won a championship. That's my favorite <laughs> Tyler Milligan picture. <laughs> I, I'm not a photogenic person. I'm very rough in no? real time. I'll, I'll put my hand up. You, you catch me uh, like candid photos. Mm -hmm. Eyes are pointing in different directions. One eye slightly closed. The other one's fully open. Yeah. It was one of the few times I felt like I actually did not look that bad. So, um, I don't know. It was cool to see you the know, pictures. It's a, good, it's a good pick. It's a good pick. Yeah. Thank you. I'm trying to, I'm working on the IG game, but it, it was a fun night. And yeah, I follow definitely Tyler on Instagram. Let's get those. Let's get those Instagram follows up for Tyler. What do you add on there? Oh, like seven, seven hundred, I think. Something oh, we like need that. to get, get Tyler a thousand. We're not, we're not doing another episode until Tyler's at one k. I refuse. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, I'm, I won't do another episode until he's at one k. What's the handle? What kind of, uh, at same as my Twitter at Tyler Milliken underscore. Okay, why do you have an underscore on Instagram? Is well, there another Tyler Milliken? No, I wanted to match my Twitter though. It's good for branding. There's, no, it's not. It's actually isn't that annoying. a social media thing? No. Like if you have like if people search for Tyler Milliken, they would just want to find you. If there's no other person that has uh, an underscore, then just do it. Uh, but I'm I'm looking at the Section 10 Reddit and a lot okay. of people are criticizing your ability to speak Spanish. Why? Well, because you're not good at it. And and you are. Yes. See. <laughs> no. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people are criticizing you. Uh, and there's a picture of you in the sweatsuit. I mean, it, it like it used to be, it used to be the Section Ten Reddit. It's really just the Tyler Milliken Reddit. It really <laughs> is. It really is. It's like eighty uh, percent. Listen, estoy haciendo mi mayor. Um, sorry, sometimes it just comes out of me. I don't even need to, <laughs> but I, I, I'm doing my best right now. I, I'm really trying hard and. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, I'm rusty. It's been a long time since I had to speak Spanish frequently like this, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. yeah, the slander in there really kind of no, it hurt they my love feelings. you. They love you. No, they, I, they just I agree, want you to but be, the Spanish? They want, they, well, yeah, your Spanish sucks, but I think like anytime that, that people are hard on you, it's like they're trying to, they're trying to take that uh, granite and turn it into diamonds. Is that the stone that turns into diamonds? Yeah, I think so. Well, I'm not trusting you on that, Jake. Is that the stone that turns into diamonds? I gotta fact check it. Yeah, fact check that. I think it might yeah. be. I know granite ha is tenido, like the hardest stone. Yeah, ha tenido una largar batala, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> as they uh, say. <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, I, I someone said I was DFA'd from Spanish class in eighth grade. And That's probably I, I true. Honestly, yeah. It's yeah. true. I, I did tell the story. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not perfect, but I'm working on it. I'm definitely better at it than Jared is. And if people have oh, tips for me, on. please. But that subreddit is hilarious. I do think I do think the posts are funny. But anytime someone says something positive, they think it's my burner, which is also hilarious. There is a real Tyler Milliken in the subreddit. I responded to my first post like a week ago. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the real Tyler Milliken in there. Don't believe the burners. Mm -hmm. Did that don't sound believe. convincing? Yeah. Uh. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp, though. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Continue. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, you would benefit uh, greatly from, from uh, therapy. Are you calling me unstable? No, I'm saying that you, uh, you're very busy. You have a lot going on. You, uh, you've got quite a balance in your life that you have to upkeep, and, and it can definitely help you to get some therapy. It's actually so easy to get caught up and what everyone else needs from you, Tyler. And never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. You know what I mean? But when we spend all this time giving, and you're a giver, it can leave us feeling stretched out, thin, and burnt out. 
and you work a lot. You get a lot of people being like, we need Tyler. We need a piece of Tyler. Give me that Tyler. Therapy mm. can give you the tools to find more balance in your life, which is what I was just talking about. So you can keep supporting others because you support me. I don't even like using the word support anymore. I'll be honest. It's a, it's a very triggering word, which is I'm, something I'm working on, therapy. But you can keep supporting others without <laughs> leaving yourself behind. I've told this a million times. I've been in therapy since 2010. That is, that's a long time. That is uh, basically how long I've been alive. Yeah. Long, long time. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, you got to give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge, by the way. No charge at all. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Jared, J-A-R-E-D, today, and you can get 10% off your first month. That is B-E. T T E R H E L P dot com slash Jared. Um, all right, yeah, let's uh, shall we? Let's do it. Yeah. Clark's Ketchup Series MVP is brought to you by Clark's Ketchup. Drizzle that ketchup. Head on down uh, and get you some Clark's Ketchup. I believe they're adding it to Fenway Park very soon. Mm. Yeah. All, all the complaints about the ketchup at Fenway, there may be a Clark's Fenway Park partnership in the works, which would be great. A lot of people would appreciate that. Um, I would. Yeah. Uh. All right, so the first vote for the Clark's Ketchup Series MVP, Will Fleming, is going Reese McGuire. And I think we should distinguish that it's Will Fleming because a lot of people will come at Will Middlebrooks. On the card, it just says Will. And everyone's like, Will Middlebrooks, how did you vote for Corey Kluber? (laughs) It's Will Fleming, the radio voice of the Boston Red Sox, W-E-E-I. Reese McGuire is his vote. Lou Merloni. Oh, wait. I forgot about the fucking dramatic music. God damn it! Do you have it? Yes! I forget which one I used. Was it this (laughs) one? Was it this one? Was it this one? Was it this one? Yeah. It's not like that. Yeah. All right. Okay. My heart's beating <laughs> out of my chest. Will Fleming. His vote is. Reese McGuire. What? Lou Merloni. Garrett Whitlock. Mm. Whitcock. Tom Karen. Tristan Casas. Alex Cora. Kike Hernandez. Not bad. Wow. There is no repeat votes from the panel. So now we have to call Cole. We <laughs> <laughs> gotta call him. Ah! <clears throat>
Um, we got a problem, Coley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do. Do you want me to? Uh, do you want me to go over the number? Hate you? What? Huh? What? What? Huh? Huh? What are you saying? Is that? Is that everyone hates you? Everyone does. I mean, there's there's one person that hates me. That's actually on. Oh the no no no! I, I heard Wally called you directly. <laughs> Wally wasn't mad. Hey, <laughs> that's. I'm not saying he was mad. I'm saying he was just like the arbiter. He's oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. No. There's uh. There's one person that's mad, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna. Hey, listen, couple adults. We're gonna have a talk. <laughs> we're just gonna have a little convo. That's all. You need me there? Good. I'll I'll call you if I need if I need backup. I'm a big body. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of man meat. Me and Jake. Uh, uh, I will say this, Coley. I uh-huh. I read the votes for Clark's Ketchup Series MVP just from the panel, not from us podcast folk, and there were no repeat votes. Yeah, it, as someone who only watched today, um, I, I don't think any of them deserve any. Mm. Uh, a tough day, real tough day, a tough day. Uh, <laughs> and then I went back and looked through the box scores of the first two games and I was just like no one was really responsible for both wins um, so it's not like I was thinking about it early, or earlier yeah I was I was leaning Whitlock personally mm. it's not a bad pick it was someone's I've, I've never made a bad pick no no uh, <laughs> all right the hits leader Verdugo and Casas both had five. Okay. Uh, Homers, Justin Turner and Kike. Just one. RBI, Kike had three. Turner had two. Verdugo had two. Uh, Extra base hits. Connor Wong had three. Justin Turner, two. Casas, two. Total bases. Justin Turner. All right, you be right back. Bye. <laughs> Justin Turner, eight. Tristan Casas, seven. Verdugo, six. Connor Wong, six. Uh, honestly, like no one, like it, like the fucking Reese McGuire sack bunt won a game. I'm going, I'm going Garrett Whitlock for having a good start in his return. Because that just, yeah, that's my vote. It's not the best, it's not the best vote that I've ever cast, but that's where I'm going. I don't hate it. I, I was considering that heavily. But I don't know. I, I think the Kike Hernandez, I know some people are probably like, really? But like the two run homer had an RBI single in the second game. So showed up in both of those. I thought played a really good shortstop in the series as well. Um, so definitely some progress on that. I don't know. But I look at and then I look at kind of Verdugo and Casas and I put them in a similar category where they were just constantly in the middle of it. Like Verdugo, three for five with the ribby. Two for five in this series finale, and even in the game where he didn't get a hit, two walks. Like, that's someone who showed up every game. Casas, you know, had a hit in every game, but, you know, one for four on the, you know, one for four of the last two games. I'd kind of push Verdugo ahead. I think I'm going to cast my vote for Alex Verdugo. I think we saw him kind of come back to be the player we were missing for a couple weeks there. I think this might be the start of another red-hot Alex Verdugo streak. I'm going to put Verdugo as my uh, my pick this week. Wait, is that the first vote for Verdugo? Yeah, I- I'm going to put a vote in for Verdugo. Like, it just feels this is weird. This going to be the most spread out catch up of all time. I'm sorry. I- I'm not going to be the guy to break this tie. I'm throwing it in another, <laughs> throwing it in another circle. Damn. All right. So it's two votes, Whitlock, one vote for the rest of the team. Jake, what do you got? I'm going Whitlock as well. Um, oh wow! Oh. Yeah, big big comeback start, and I just don't think there was anyone offensively that really jumped off the page. So I guess it doesn't matter what Coley says, because uh, but if he goes Verdugo or he makes it two somewhere else, yeah, but we have three for Whitlock. You f- fucking idiot! Congratulations to Garrett Whitlock. Who else voted for Whitlock? Uh, Lou Maloney. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Clark's Ketchup Series MVP. Another pitcher. Another pitcher takes it down. 
Garrett Whitlock, Clark's Ketchup Series MVP. Congratulations. Um, Never called Garrett. him Garrett Shitlock. Yeah, you did say that. Never did. You did say that, but did you hear? What? There's a new streaming service called Max. And it's a sure bet. With everything on HBO Max, including HBO, the DC Universe, Adult Swim, together with TLC, Discovery, Food Network, and more, Max really has some of the best content out there. I mean, it's literally something for everyone in my household, where I just live by myself. But literally, Not anymore. something from everything for me. That's true. Yeah. You live here? Yep. Max is where we all win, Tyler. Max is the one to watch. Subscription required. Visit max.com. Sign up today. Up your entertainment game. That's, that's a little catchphrase that I made up for them. That wasn't in the notes. Uh, Stop and Shop, look ahead. Brought to you by Stop and Shop. Head on down to Stop and Shop. Use the promo code section 10 to get 10 cents off each tangerine. If you buy five pounds or more tangerines, only at Stop and Shop with the promo code section 10. Uh, we're off on Monday. Enjoy the holiday. Uh, Brian Bale versus Ben Lively. James Paxton versus Luke Weaver. And Chris Sale versus Hunter Green. Ben Lively, 2-2, two and two, a 2.65 ERA. Pretty good. 0.88 whip. Very good. 9.5 strikeouts per nine. Pretty good. Debuted in the majors in 2017 for the Phillies, but has not pitched in MLB since 2019. He spent the last year in AAA for the Reds. And in 2020 and 2021, he was in the KBO. He's called up in May and has made four appearances, two starts. His two starts, been pretty good. Pitched against the Yankees, five and two-thirds, two hits, two earned runs, a walk, eight strikeouts, gave up a homer, took an L, but it is the Reds. They're very bad. Uh, May 24th, he went against the Cardinals, six innings, five hits, two earned runs, two walks, eight strikeouts, gave up a couple bombs. Uh, he will give up the home run, but solid strikeout numbers in his starts. He's got a really good slider. He uses it 27% of the time. Hitters are 0 for 16 with 10 strikeouts against his slider. Pretty fucking good. That's a 63% whiff rate. Uh, soft throwing in, the, in terms of the fastball, 90.8 four seam and 91.5 sinker. Uh, the Reds are two and two in the games that he pitches, one and one when he starts. He's only faced Adam Duvall out of everyone in the Red Sox lineup. Luke Weaver, one and two, 545 ERA, a 137 whip and an 8.8 .8 strikeouts per nine. Seven starts on the year and only 38 innings. He's only walked nine batters all year, but he's allowed nine goddamn home runs. Uh, he has allowed home runs in four out of seven starts this year. Um, 529 FIP backs up the shitty ERA, throws his four seamer 93.7 miles an hour. It's been getting hammered, 323 batting average. Um, but some bad luck there. 260 on uh 260 expected batting, 523 slug, 444 expected slug. Sliders is best pitch, leads the way with 18 strikeouts and a 43% whiff rate. Uh, Reds are two and five when he starts and have lost the last three. The last start was his best start of the year. Game score of 72. Previous high was 55. Went against the Cardinals. Six and a third, three hits, no earned runs, one walk, six strikeouts. Um, he's faced JT, two for seven with a triple. Uh, faced Kike, two for five with a double. Hunter Green. We all know Hunter Green because he throws really hard. One in four, 418 ERA and a 138 whip with a 12.9 strikeouts per nine. He's made 11 starts this year, but only 56 innings pitched, just over five innings a start. His FIP is pretty good, 363. Uh, he's had some bad BABIP luck, 359. Um, that would probably tell you that the Reds defense just isn't good behind him. He's thrown exactly 28 innings in April and in May. Uh, 289 ERA in April, 546 ERA in May. Uh, yeah, not good for him. Before absolutely shoving in his last start, he allowed two home runs in three or four starts. Uh, that being said, he has 21 strikeouts in his last 13 innings pitched. Pretty fucking good. Uh, last outing versus the Cubs, six innings, did not allow a hit, did not allow a run. Obviously, 11 strikeouts. The fastball, as we talked about, you know it, you love it. 98.7 miles per hour is what he's averaging with it. 44 of his 79 strikeouts have come on the fastball. 27% whiff rate, uh, but also six of the eight home runs that he's allowed has been on the fastball. The slider, very sneaky, very good pitch. 169 expected batting on his slider, 42% whiff rate. The Reds are three and eight when he pitches. They're one and four in May. That's not good. 
Red Sox hitters, you got JT, two for five with a double. Devers, one for two with a double. Uh, a couple notes here on Brian Bayo. He's allowed two earned runs or less in five straight starts. He's only made seven starts in the year. Uh, he, the only runs that he's allowed in his last start were both on solo home runs. He's had a little bit of a home run issue. He's, he's allowed seven this year, but he's only allowed, um, but he has not allowed a home run in one start. Interestingly enough, this is something to pay attention to. He flipped his fastball usage last game. Did you pick up on this, Tyler? No, continue. All season, the sinker had been his go-to pitch, averaging 37% usage, where the four seam uh, has been the least used pitch at 20%. Last start, the four seam was his number one pitch at 33%, and the sinker um, was his number four at 20%. He did allow a home run on both pitches, though. But uh, something to watch. See what the usages look like against the Reds. If this is something that he is trying to switch up, if it's something that he's going to stick with, if there's going to be some consistency here, are we going to go back and forth? Just an interesting storyline. Changeup still has a 46% whiff rate. The Red Sox are 5-2 and two when he takes the mound. Reds hitters, 5-12 uh, for 12 with a double homer and a walk. James Paxton, last time out, not very good. Had the three walks and two homers. The fastball velocity dipped. Um, it's dipped half a mile an hour in each of his last three starts. It went from 96.2, 96.1, 95.4. Uh, Red Sox are one and two when he starts. We all know that he should have been two and one because of the blown save by Kenley against the Cardinals. Uh, Reds hitters, five for 15 with a homer. Will Myers has the homer. Chris Sale. FIP is all the way down to 390. We are coming mm. on down, baby. 390 fit for Chris Sale. Didn't have his best stuff the last time out, but only three strikeouts. Uh, held the D-backs to one run anyway. Pretty good. Dating back to April 18th, he's allowed one earned run exactly every other start. So next time out, it'll be one earned run. Great. 242 ERA, 317 FIP in the month of May. Opponents hitting a buck 83 with a 587 OPS against them. Love to see that. Sale has made some interesting tweaks to his pitch usage as well. Last season, Four seam, 46%. Slider, 32%. Change up, 11%. Sinker, 11%. Last three starts. The last three starts. Four seam, 53%. Slider, 39%. Change up, down to 5%. And the sinker, down to 3%. So if we're going overlay here, four seam from 46 to 53. Slider from 32 to 39. Change up. 11 down to 5, sinker 11 down to 3. Uh, Coley's calling back. Is this the is this the McMahon? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, Garrett, Garrett Whitlock already won. Yeah, he did. did you, were you <laughs> going to vote for him? That's where I was leaning, yeah. And like, like even when you were talking about like Turner, like half of his production came today, the game they lost in terms of like Extra base hits, home run, all that. Like that doesn't, that doesn't get you catch up in my eyes. I agree. So that's four votes, Whitlock, uh, to win it. It was very spread out. It was a very weird catch up sesh. Who else? Who came in second? Verdugo. That's the only other person I was really considering. Uh, it was four votes, Whitlock. Two votes. Uh. No, no one else had more than one vote, right? I had Verdugo. Will had Reese McGuire. Uh, there was a Tristan Casas in there, right? Yeah, TC had Tristan Casas. Um, AC had Kike. Yeah, it was very spread out. I think Whitlock was the only guy that got more than one vote, and he got four. And then there was votes for like four other players, and Euclid didn't get back. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Congratulations to Garrett Woodlock. We just did the stop and shop look ahead. Uh, do you want to do a series prediction, Coley? So we got the red. Yeah. The Battle of the Ox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it in? It's on the road, right? No, it's home. Oh, good. So they showed that graphic today that we have the best home batting average in baseball. And boy, oh boy, does it stink on the road. 
Oh boy. Uh, do you want to hear the pitching matchups? It's Hunter Green pitching. He is. That's sick. Uh, Brian Bayo versus Ben Lively, James Paxton versus Luke Weaver, and Chris Sale versus Hunter Green. It's pretty. Is Luke Weaver good? Yeah. Well, mm. no. Mm. No. Uh, Bad. Ben, okay. ben Lively is good. Luke Weaver stinks. No. Yeah, There's Ben no Lively got a 265 ERA. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Did they call up Ellie yet? Uh, I rumor on the street is he's getting called up on Friday, so we will miss him. Is that a home game for them? For the Reds? Yeah. I don't know. You can't call him up on the road. That'd be insane. They are a dumb organization. Um, he, they are. Yes, they will be home, home. <laughs> against the Brew Crew. Have you seen like what he's doing in the minors? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, he's a freak. He's he's got the top five hardest hit balls from the left and right side of the plate. No one else has more than one from either side of the plate. He's got two <laughs> top five from both. He's a monster. He's six foot five. <laughs> the NL Central is just gonna have five O'Neill Cruises. <laughs> yeah, he's six five. Uh, he's got an OPS over a thousand. In 31 games at AAA, he's in 300, 395 on base with a 1049 OPS. Yeah, he's an absolute monster. I remember, I think it was last summer. Yeah, last summer I was at City Field and the Mets were playing the Reds and Moustakis was on the Reds at the time. And I was like, who do you guys got coming up? And he just started hyping up this dude, <laughs> I, I, like to the point where he was talking about Bigfoot. I was like, is he this good? He's that good. He's that good. He hit one last year. It, it was like middle of the season, too. He hit one last year so far, and like the camera's watching the ball, obviously. He doesn't leave the batter's box until like 13 seconds after the video starts. He's, <laughs> he's like the number two face of baseball behind Otani, in my eyes. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, that's the word on the street. Uh, that's what little birdies are telling me is be on the lookout for a call up on Friday. I don't know. Can't confirm. Can't confirm. Should I just trade for him? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have to be the one to call him and be like, hey, this is the guy. I, I don't think Heim knows about him because obviously he'd be on the team. <laughs> <laughs> Kill like board, Dale straight Cruz. Up. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, this Taylor right. Cruz guy. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I told him about James Wood. He ignored me, so right. clearly my word's no good with him. I'm glad that he ignored me about Jack Leiter because Marcel Meyer just got promoted to Double A. Oh, he's coming up, coming up to Maine, kid. Oh yeah! Congratulations, Marcel Meyer, promoted to Double A. He's coming. That pain train is coming. And uh, I'm excited to see it. Number five People possible forget. in baseball right now. Yeah, yeah. Number one. Nose coming like right behind them, too. Who? People forget about Blaze Jordan. People do forget a little Who, bit. Who's been tearing the cover off the ball in high eight. So well, you, you drafted Blaze, too. I did draft Blaze. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. I did draft him. Yeah. Was that Heim, though? Uh, yes, that was that was Heim. It was that was Heim for yeah, draft? 2020. Oh, yeah, because he took Nick York, yeah, took Nick York, which you could yeah. go over slot for Blaze later. Yeah, 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 no, that was me and Heim took that up. <laughs> yeah, 847 OPS for Blaze Jordan right now, age 20 he's season pretty, at high A. Mm, he's pretty good. We love Blaze, he's so crazy young and Myers younger somehow. Yeah. That was a great draft so, by you and I. Shane Drohan. Down on the farm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't sleep was on it, Coley's farm system right now. Was it, I'm sure this is more of a Tyler question, but was it Chad Jennings? Someone just wrote like a very in-depth piece about what they're doing with 
their pitchers. Like they're actually trying to develop them now as opposed yeah. to just like drafting them. And who knows what the fuck they were doing. Well, before. You, you, you just hope you just, Oh, well, maybe, maybe he'll just become a great pitcher. You know, it doesn't really matter if we do anything here. It's just, if he's going to be good, he's going to be good. No, they, that's why you watch someone like, hands. yeah, it's like why you watch someone like Brian Bayo, who, you know, wasn't a top 100 guy. And within a year, he becomes a top 30 prospect in baseball and now looks like a future top of the rotation guy. Same for Shane Drohan at AAA right now. Like that was a guy fifth round pick in that 2020 draft. People forget. And now he's the best mm-hmm. pitching prospect in your entire system here. Like now they're actually working with some of these guys they are using advanced technology, you know, all this different stuff to figure out, you know, tunneling and how you can kind of adjust the, you know, mechanics and the stuff within itself, how you can make guys better. They actually buying into it. They didn't fall behind like they were, you know, really the Nebraska era was a big part of it. But that's what uh, O'Halloran was saying. He was like, we went from being the most front thinking organization during the Theo years to right before Heim came, we had fallen to like middle of the pact. And that's just not who the Red Sox are. You got to call him it B-O-H. Even- you sound like a casual. Would you? Yeah, and I... Have you heard it pronounced Drohan or is it Drone? I've been saying Drone in my head. No, the other way. Droham. Drohan. Like Zohan. Yeah, I'm probably not going to do that. That's too much work. <laughs> yeah. Um, it wasn't even as much like the article did touch on tunneling and advanced stuff, but like the thing I took from it, they were like, hey, what if you throw a change up? And he was like, all right. Like, <laughs> like why doesn't everyone do that? They were like, you don't throw this pitch or, or cutters. They were like, hey, yeah, just just throw a cutter instead of a, a two seam. And he was like, all right. Okay. Yeah, like, Drohan was the guy. Like, his changeup was like ass when he entered the system. They're like, hey, like, let's fucking change this and make it actually good. Now, even well, Garrett Whitlock is like, now we're making his changeup work again. <laughs> we're not hoping his, Matt his Andrees comes is, here and teaches people pitches anymore. Piece? <laughs> the big piece. Big piece. Jerome, it wasn't even that his changeup was bad. He like he was talking about it. He was like, I just thought you threw the ball slower. So he was just <laughs> lobbing him in there. <laughs> just seeing off. <laughs> uh, it's like development's an actual beautiful thing when you actually try to make your prospects better. You just don't hope everyone becomes a great player. Yeah. Well. Is, uh, did Jake does Jake have a sweep? Jake, what do you got? We haven't voted yet, but yeah, I'm gonna go sweep. Yeah, I apologize. I, I thought everyone gave their prediction. No, uh, no, I asked but, you first. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, well, Jake went first, which is which is good. I threw it to Jake. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank you. The rare leadoff, Jake. Yeah, that was huge. Then I'm gonna go with him. I'm going sweep. You're going sweep here. Mm-hmm. 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 I got it right last. I said two out of three against the D backs, but I went win loss win, and it was win win loss. So I can't take full credit. Um, I'm, I'm going to go two out of three again. Run it back. Afraid of fucking Blake Lively. <laughs> Blake Lively. I met Blake Lively at Fenway. Yeah. At Fenway. Yeah. I could see that. I met her. I was at the, the town movie premiere. Mm. The, the Joey Mazzullo's favorite movie? Yeah, he watches it six times a day, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Tyler, what do you got? Yeah, I'm not a bitch like you are. I'll go with Sweep here as well. Uh, wow! Sorry, I'm not a bitch. Uh, listen, <laughs> thank you. Shots fired. We're, the Rays are coming up after this. You got four games against them, including a doubleheader. Go clean up. Go be the team. You didn't take, you, you know, you took two out of three from Arizona, but it was a losing road trip overall. Show up against the Reds, beat the fuck out of them, kind of get some momentum going. You because... want them to fight them? Huh? Mm-hmm. Jesus. Look, his internet you just matter. advocated for You just advocated for physical violence. Welcome back. I've been here. Cole, no, was I, I here there the whole time? Yeah. Well, yeah. for me. Not yeah. for anyone else. I'm on the phone with you, right? Right. Yeah, um, no, but go in, beat the fuck out of the Reds. I'll take two out of three. That'd be nice. But the Red Sox need a series to get some real momentum going. I want to feel it. Let's string five out of six together here. Wipe away that entire Angel series. I don't want to think about it. You got good pitching matchups in this. It's not like, you know, you're sitting out here and we're worrying about the Corey Klubers or the Nick Pavettas of the world anymore. Bullpen fresh with the day off. Cutter lived. His ankle's not broken after that ridiculous play. Please. 
make it happen. Have a series where you kind of establish your dominance a bit and give yourself some breathing room. Get farther away from 500. Blue Jays are on your right. ass, man. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. Uh, Cole, any final thoughts? No, I just had to yell at my dad to get back in the bed. Hold on. All right, you do that. Um, Tyler, any final thoughts? Congrats to Roman Anthony, who landed at uh, 49 on Kylie McDaniel's top 50. Uh, that's a really big deal. I know a lot of people look at the numbers right now and, you know, they don't scream anything crazy. It's like floating right around a 700 OPS, but all the, you know, exit velocities, the bear or the batted ball data has been excellent. Um, I think that's going to be a name. Once he starts lifting the ball a little bit more, they've been working with him on that. It's really going to pop. He, he should be a prospect. That's up at the very top of the Red Sox system in the next 12 months. Jake's takes go Celtics, go Celtics. All right, Cole, you got anything else? Yeah, it's uh, it's about that time of the year. Is this team a, a buyer or a seller? I think they're poor under they're, the luxury taxer. Yeah, they're poor. They they're neither. They're just like I'm poor. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so you can you can, I mean we saw it last year. You can buy and sell simultaneously. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, then you fuck up right, the next year like you did last year. Yeah, well, I, yeah, well, it was, we, it's fucking May. We'll talk about the trade deadline in like ten weeks. We'll, oh, it's coming! It's coming! It is coming! It is coming! But uh, Cole, I thank you for uh, thank you for joining us um, for the draft analysis. Go Celtics! And um, we'll see you on fucking uh, Thursday. Thursday. Buenas noches, amigos.